promise I'll keep a low profile. Look, even if I let you, and I'm not, you can't just waltz into school and start class. Do you think you're the only one who can forge documents? Do you have a... Five days of ration, spare clothes, GPS, cash. What's your name? John Smith. I used to have to get a coffee. <laughs> nice. we, we used to have these little coffee. Oh, those Cuban coffees. Were oh, dude. They were addictive. <laughs> so I was going to start by asking you what you saw in Alex that made him a perfect John Smith, but now I know he, he yeah, gets you drinks. Anything I need. Cokes. He cuts my grass. Anything. It's just anything. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I get you coke and I cut you grass. <laughs> what the? Yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what the hell? Young adult. That's young true. Adult. That does not sound right. <laughs> Alex Pettifer cuts <laughs> DJ Caruso's grass. And he gets him coke. <laughs> That's excellent. Do you see what I've started here? Look what oh you've done. God. What have you done? Uh, it's no, you know it's, it's, it's his personality. I mean, he's really accessible. He's a, obviously a very, a very attractive gentleman. But to me, it was more about his vulnerability and what he can bring to number four. And he made number four someone you can really root for and that you feel sorry for. Even though it is sort of an alien movie, this is also a superhero movie in, in some sense. So. What was the, the one moment in the film that was like your superhero moment? <laughs> Every superhero moment is when, I think it's when the reluctant hero turns and realizes I actually am gonna do this. And I think that is when, uh, I think that's when Henry dies. I think he's... Yeah, it's interesting, I was gonna say, when he puts on Henry's jacket and we do this like on a low up, yeah. up shot of him, then you realize like he's now, the torch has passed. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you realize that he, he's the warrior now. Yeah. Talk a little bit about doing a movie that everyone is saying is the next Twilight. Does that help you? Does that hurt you? Uh, Does that freak you out? Uh, no, I don't think it helps and I don't think it hurts. I mean, I think people see a film and they make comparisons or whatever they think, but I think when, once you see our film, and I mean, I, it's so not what Twilight is, uh, but at the same time, if, if someone makes that correlation and they think it's a positive it's thing, it's great. Compliment. Yeah, it's a compliment. Yeah. If we have off the success yeah, of Twilight exactly. had, then we'll be very happy. Yeah. But yeah. the movie itself is absolutely nothing like Twilight, mm -hmm. you know. The book was not out when you guys were making the film, so you really didn't know what sort of reaction it would get. Mm -hmm. But um, is there anything that you got? I know there's going to be a sequel to the book. Is there any sort of backstory that you have? Anything that you, you found out that you didn't get to put into this film? Well, there's a lot. You know, I, I chose as a filmmaker not to really deal with flashbacks of what happened on Lorien, as if you read the book, you know. So we kind of made that the history of what happened on his planet is a little bit more of the Chinatown of our story. It's a more of a secret. And what we realized in, in some of the uh, uh, test screenings, which went really well, where people were like so obsessed with like, wait, what happened? Why did they leave? How did they? And so I think probably that would be something that you'd want to bring in if we're fortunate enough for the movie gods to take care of us into the next movie is what happened there and why they had to leave. Now, we see the, the aliens, the Mogadorians, pretty early on. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that decision, because, you know, some people might leave it till the last minute, but they're so visually cool, it was fun to see them in the beginning. Yeah, no, I think there's sort of a mystery about who they are, and, and ultimately it's one of those things as a filmmaker, when you see that opening sequence, it sort of sets up the mystery and the power, and you don't quite get such a great look at them till the very end of that first sequence. And I just think it's really nice to set the table to know that this is, as he's denying who he's supposed to be, this is the force that's coming after him. I just think it's really good old-fashioned storytelling.